Sir Sanjay Ji, I thought that uh, this event is not going to be ended because he has a list of all my accomplishments and achievements more than me. So I was thinking that this is, this is going to about me and perhaps I won't have any time to talk to you. Thank you for that. Thank you for your kindness. My dear young friends, <coughs> President uh, Satyanarayan Ji, Mr. and other dignitaries, sisters and brothers. I started with calling you my dear friends, not on the dais, but also here and here. When I am in any institute of technology, engineering, I feel at home because I am one of you. It is a matter of just a few years when I am entering here and sitting with you, talking to you, I started thinking of my own engineering days, student days. But of course, whatever you are doing and you have achieved, not only in academics, but in other fields which I saw in this short movie, it is incredible. I congratulate you for that. I could recall that uh, founder of the uh, institute and uh, registrar sir and a few of officers from the from the institute came to meet me in Delhi. We wanted to invite for convocation, but uh, at that time I could not come. How many of you were studying there at that time in 2015? Some of you were in the university in 2015? No? All of you were enrolled after 2015, isn't it? Achha. So you can assume that I did not come because of you, I wanted to meet and greet you. The reality is that I have more than 45,000 invitations from India and abroad and my office had calculated if I had to attend all those invitations, I had to live for another 150 years. So if you can pray for that, I will try to go everywhere. Would you pray for me? You can keep on praying, but it is not possible. But one of you, as scientist, can do some miracles. All the changes are being made in DNAs. All the scientific achievements is not about reducing the aging, but also or longevity of life. But the scientists feel that the day is not very far that all of you perhaps not us, but all of you are going to live at least 100 or 120 years of life. And that invention can be possible from one of you, Vanessa University. And so far you have been inviting or honoring Nobel laureates, I have seen the list. But I wanted to come one day when one of you will become the Nobel Laureate and we will all celebrate here in this hall. From SRM University, SRM Institute. It is possible. If 
it is possible with me, it can be possible with anyone. There are not too many uh, engineers who got the Nobel Peace Prize. So you can even get the Peace Prize. Of course the science faculties are there, but you can also be one of the Peace Laureates. It reminds me a story when um, Albert Einstein got the Nobel Prize. He had so many invitations from all the academic institutions around in Europe and other parts of the world. Everybody wanted to listen from him, his newly invented theory of relativity. So he had to go to several places and then one day his driver felt that the boss is getting exhausted, repeating the same speech, same theory again and again, sometimes two or three times a day. So he thought that it is not good for the health of his boss. So he said, he went to him and told, Sir, you look exhausted and I have an idea. So he asked, what idea? He said that every time I am with you, listening to your story, your speeches, I can recall every single sentence or every single word in verbatim. Coincidentally, this man was also an elderly man with long hairs. He was trying to copy his boss perhaps. But the best part of it was that those days such cameras were not there, the small cameras. And I know that many of you are just taking uh, the photos or recording it through your mobile phones because everybody has a handheld smartphone with camera. So in many places people knew about Einstein but they have not seen the photo in the smaller institutions or academy. Some would recall the long-haired scientist but many not. So finally the day has come and an experiment Einstein went on the dais and then he gave a beautiful speech with a lot of energy, a lot of power, no tiredness on the face. People thought what energy he has. A great speech was made. Everybody stood up, standing, obeying. And there was after the speech, there was a professor sitting in the front row as director madam is sitting and a few of you faculties. So this old guy stood up and said, Mr. Einstein, I have a question for you. He said, okay, you may ask. He asked the question. And the poor Einstein was looking here and there. And then he said, Professor, I was hoping that you are going to ask a real tough question, but this is such a childish question that even my sofa, my driver sitting in the back can answer that question. So poor Einstein has to come back on the dais and answer that question. As they say that these five members of Nobel Committee give you a medal and a diploma in the name of peace and they take away the peace for the whole of your life. But I am happy to be here. But my priority is always to be with the young 
students, young people in college and universities. Excuse me, I'll put And the reason is simple and clear. While working across 144 countries in the last 20 years, I have learned many lessons. I have been meeting the presidents and prime ministers even before the Nobel Prize. Now more of course. I had a chance to work with NGOs, with other civil society organizations, teachers, groups, private sector and so on. But in that course of learning, I found that no voice for the poorest children in the world can be more compelling the voice than the voice of young people like you and you and you. More voice can be stronger than the voice of young people for any social transformation. And if you look at the history of social changes in the world, the young people have been on the forefront. I'm not talking about destruction. But I'm talking about their anger and energy for righteousness and justice, which each one of you have. I'm talking about the purest form of compassion which is still unpolluted, which can be found only in the children and the young people as you. And that lesson has inspired me to spend much of my time with the young people with a lot of expectations. Of course, some of you must be studying science, some technology, I can see some MBA, medicine. I'm sure that the press people are sitting here but they are not studying media here. I, I was just looking at the these cardboards. So how many of you study engineering, technology? Oh, majority of you. Majority, almost all. Any medicines tonight? Or not there today? Oh, their incomes are there. It's good also because if any question was asked about medication, medicine, I was not able to answer anything. So your, your choice was good. You should invite a senior doctor to tell the medicine students. And who is studying MBA? There are people from MBA, young people. That is good. A question was asked by Sanchezi ji when we were sitting inside and I said that I am going to answer in front of all your He asked what is your inspiration and I simply said that such inspirations which gives you courage to challenge the wrongs and injustices around you are possible only with the grace of God. Dear sir, our hearts are filled with joy and we feel the chief guest of this function, Dr. Kailash Hathiyarthi, the Vice Chancellor and my dear colleagues and my young students. It was a great pleasure to be with him and also listen to his story right from where he started as a teacher and then transformed into a social reformer. The only thing I feel is that the Chancellor of this University would have been very much proud if he was here at this time but unfortunately he is out of country. But on his behalf, like we are here and you are here and we will
convey our regards and respects to Dr. Kailash Satyadri. We were not there when the slavery was abolished by the President of the U.S., the Abraham Lincoln. We all used to read in the books. It was done as a social reform and as a great renaissance. But fortunately for us, in India, there is one Abraham Lincoln who is our Kailash Ritiyatri. You should not miss this occasion where he has called in you and also your university, the SSRM Institute of Science and Technology, to be a part of his mission. He has requested us to be a part of his mission of 100 million changes. And by this, he means that with the 100 million children who are going to schools and the colleges, he can change the life of more than 100 million underprivileged children who are not steady and who are deprived of childhood and who are in slavery. I, on behalf of you and the administration, assure you that we will be starting a center for child rights in SRM University. This will be acting as a model center and will be the first university center in India in association with this foundation. This promise I am giving him not because of the faith I have in me or in my administration, but the faith and trust I have in you and uh, our great students. I kindly request you to be the part of this revolution and to see to that that in a few decades to come, as you wish, this child slavery, child trafficking and the deprivation of childhood is all the things of the past. We all feel that we want to contribute to the society at some point of time. But sometimes we think and we don't take any initiatives because we have several other priorities. But sometimes we do initiate, but because of the arduous nature of the work, we withdraw slowly. But only few people go through the strenuous path and achieve it. And Dr. Kailash Shachadri is one of them, the very few. And we are very happy to have him here. We have several Nobel laureates who have been coming to our institution. Almost six of them have come so far. But I feel that this is a great moment because nobody has come for the peace of the nation and the child welfare. The child labor 
is a problem which has been there for over a century and more than that. And in fact, if you know the midday meal scheme was introduced in Tamil Nadu by the then Chief Minister Dr. K. Kamaraj in the Congress government. The main idea behind this is for the, the child labor happens because of the poverty and the poverty should be alleviated through education. If you give education to the students or the children, then the child labor will go away. And when the Kamaraj, the Chief Minister was told by the then Financial Secretary that we don't have enough funds in the state government to do this scheme, the Chief Minister told, if we don't have money in the government, I will go and beg with each and every one of the citizens of this state and the country and I will implement myself. This was a great statement and it was made possible and this was an initiative which made all states and now across the nation to introduce the midday meal scheme for the welfare of the child education. So, here we have an opportunity in front of us and we are ready to utilize that for the welfare of the children and as I said earlier, on behalf of you, I give the assurance that we will be working very closely with this trust so that the child labor is abolished very soon. I thank Dr. Kaila Satyaji and Mrs. Satyaji for having come over here and also spoken at length about his experience and also arduous journey to the students which would have made a great inspiration in them. Thank you very much.